Oh, here it comes. Okay. Welcome. I'm Jill Davey, and thank you for dropping into this practice tonight. So this um, one you will see in the title is entitled The Five Aggregates Part Two. So this is a little five-part series that um, is covering, is an introduction, definitely an introduction to uh, an important topic of the five, what's called the five aggregates. So this is number two, um, and I'll put the link below uh, on the recording if you want to um, catch the first one. And let me just grab this. <clears throat> so the first one gives more of an introduction as to what these five aggregates are. So I'll do this briefly just to give context for those that maybe didn't catch that first uh, recording or um, feel like in person, but the first Zoom gathering that we did last week. <clears throat> And just because it's passing through my mind at this moment, and I'm feeling I might forget at the end, I'm just going to mention for folks on the Zoom recording that I, next week I am going to take off, uh, have a break, a little little holiday. So um, there won't be, I'll send an email as well, but just so you know, there isn't one next Wednesday. Okay, so... Uh, mm -hmm. The aggregates are a system, uh, an insight that the Buddha had to help us understand how a sense of self comes into being all the time, <laughs> constantly happens instantaneously, so quickly this collection of experiences and without clear seeing they reinforce and create a sense of me being separate from everything else and being continuous and being permanent and these are um, fraught with not seeing clearly the nature of things. Um, so the first one we talked about in the part one of this series uh, is called form. And that means this sense doors or what are in that that's what it's called in the Dharma, but we would just call it our sense organs the eyes, ears, nose, mouth, skin, or sense of touch. And then the mind is also considered a sense door in these teachings. So there's six sense doors um, or sense organs, if you want to, um, you know, just translate it in your mind when, you, when I say sense doors out of uh, conditioning. So the second one that um, of these five is the focus for tonight. And this is something that I'll be referring to in its Pali word, the language of the teachings as they were written down. And it's called Vedana. That's V-E-D-E-N-A. And there's a long accent over the A. This word, I'll be using that word Vedna because it's often translated as feeling, which is confusing when it's translated into English because it is, does not mean emotions. We think usually feeling, I think of feelings like emotions, and that's not what this is. A slightly more accurate translation of Vedna is called feeling tone, which gives you the sense it's something different than emotions, feeling tone. Um, I'm, I'm just used to using the word Vedana, so that's what I'm going to probably be using. 
Yeah. And so this form, which is the what we talked about in part one, the these these five senses plus the mind sense door um, are the ways that we know our world. It's how we make contact with the world. It's how we're <laughs> surviving and living and moving and uh, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, etc., hearing. Um, and remembering, etc. So it's um, and each one of these in the bare, absolute bare first moment of contact of a sense door with what is called an object, something in the world has a quality of Vedana to it. So I'm gonna break that down. Let's just talk about one sense door. They're all making contact with the world all the time, every moment. Um, but we're gonna try to just prize them apart a little bit to, so that we can see if we can understand that. And more importantly, we'll practice with it which is a much better way to understand anything. <clears throat> hmm. So right now my eyes are closed. And as soon as I open the eye, not eye, as soon as the eye opens, it receives um, the experience of seeing light and shape and form re reflected into this, organ of the eye. I can't, you know, go into the complexity of the amazing system of how, how that happens. But um, as soon as the, the eye opens and receives the experience of seeing, everything it's making contact with has a has a quality of there's only three vedanas pleasant unpleasant and what's called neither pleasant nor unpleasant in short we call that neutral pleasant unpleasant and neutral this is when we haven't heard this before it's I still can remember when I first heard this being like very confused, like, what are you talking about? It's a very, I'd never heard these concepts before or open to them as a practice or an insight. So if it feels confusing, just know that that's normal and, and then check it out. Um, so pleasant, unpleasant or neutral. Most of what we experience through any of our sense doors is neutral. It's most because we're receiving so much information all the time through any one sense door. Like there's so much happening the mind just filters out absolutely most of it. And most of it is really quite quite neutral, mundane, even weak Im imp sensory impressions. Um, and those type of contacts, they just stop at that. We don't really notice which, when things are neutral like that, we tend to be not really awake to what's happening, not really paying attention. So they're quite simple, brief, faint sensory impressions that don't lead to more mental formations, more prolif proliferation of thought. However, in any given moment, there often is pleasant 
pleasant things. So again, with the eyes, eyes closed, my eye uh, opens and it, I can notice my eye, eyes are immediately drawn to a pleasant light that's happening over here. There's a beautiful salt lamp there with a golden glow. Even though I was looking here, the eye sense door said, oh, listen, and wants to turn and look and um, move towards what is pleasant. Um, there isn't very much unpleasant in my view right now, but let's just see again. So if I close my eyes and then, yep, there's, so there's like piles of paper down here. There's a garbage can with a bunch of paper and a little side table with more papers on it that feel a bit cluttery. There's more paper over here. And that contact is, for me in this moment, unpleasant. It causes a little bit of stress. I'd like to get rid of it. You know, I'd rather it not be there. So that's just in this moment with one of the sense doors, just trying to point out what I'm noticing is mostly neutral, something pleasant, something unpleasant that's being picked up. Now, it, what's very important to notice about Vedana is that it's not in the object. It's not that thing that's pleasant. It's not the papers that are unpleasant. It's not the view isn't neutral necessary. It's not in the trees. Um, it's just in, uh, okay, I'll, I'll explain more in a moment. So first of all, it's not in the object and it's also not our choice. So in those moments, I wasn't choosing, yeah, I think that'll be the pleasant thing. I just waited to notice how the eye was drawn to something pleasant and also noticed some aversion towards um, things that were unpleasant. I didn't like say, what should I choose, even though it looked like it might have looked like that. Another important aspect of Vedana is that it's different for all of us. So if we were all sitting in the same chair with this same view, we'd all have different experiences. The, that light coming through the trees for some might have been like, oh, so pleasant. And that's kind of annoying or unpleasant or, you know, whatever. It, it, so it's different for everybody. And another important point with Vedana is that even with the same person, it changes over time. So tomorrow that might be unpleasant and that might be neutral, you know, or whatever. It's it's a changing conditioned arising. Now remember these, I'm saying a lot of stuff kind of quickly because it the nature of this dropping group. And so I just want this to be an introduction or a refresher if you're already familiar with Vedana. There's lots more to learn about it and explore in practice. So don't feel like you have to get all this. Um, yeah, just an introduction. Um, so as I was saying, most of the contact we're experiencing through our sense doors is like really neutral, mundane, weak contact, and not much happens with it. However, some things, like it's part of just our conditioning, it's part of our biology, it's, um, yeah, these are all conditioned conditions that create the different Vedanas that change over time. And so sometimes because of our built-in fight, flight, freeze responses, um, Vedana can be quite very strong. <laughs> Just tonight, because I've been pondering Vedana all day, and I, 
I have I have a really huge startle response in this system. <laughs> it's really big. It's embarrassing sometimes, really. <laughs> but and I was just walking outside, just around the path of the house. I was going to go and say goodbye to my partner. Yeah, because before we left for doing different things in the evening. <laughs> and I guess I was looking down at a weed or one of the dogs or something and didn't see them coming and didn't know that they, I was thinking I was going down to the river to find them. And so they were coming up and I was this big startle. And really it was just eye contact with the sense door. Oh, there's movement. There's a, a form, there's shape. But um, the conditions that, that primal biology in the system, it was immediately like, <laughs> Yeah, big startle response. It, it, um, so I, that's like one very simple um, example that arose tonight. Um, and it, so it was an essential thing for our survival, but it may be less of that now. And so we can learn to start to see these contexts just as what they are, the Vedna just as what it is without adding to the story. Um, that being said, like a, a startle response like that, it was like unpleasant Vedana. And then that's it. That's the end of the story. It didn't proliferate into a whole big, a bigger experience. I often do this. I quite often um, when something like I'll just say oh what's an example walking in the park and then it starts pouring rain and I didn't bring a raincoat or umbrella or anything and so it's very unpleasant Vedna I don't like it it's cold I'm getting wet the I don't like it part comes after but it's unpleasant and so before it becomes like a big thing and I'm ultra upset and annoyed and frustrated and hard on myself because I didn't plan or whatever extra story. I just say to myself, sometimes out loud, unpleasant, unpleasant, Vedana. I just name it. Unpleasant, unpleasant. And, um, and then that's it. That's the end of the story. It was just unpleasant. It's and unpleasant things happen quite often, but just naming it as unpleasant was like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's that. Unpleasant and it's impermanent. It's changing. It's not me and mine. It's yeah, just seen for what it is. But this element, aggregate, meaning one of the pieces that becomes this idea of me, um, is really, really important in meditation because it is a conditioning factor for our reactions. So you can see, I mean, I've just given very mundane examples, but there's certainly... You can see if you're not mindful of it and just being able to say, oh, this is pleasant or unpleasant, that it can quickly and does quickly lead to aversion, clinging, or delusion. So when something is pleasant, if I'm not able to just know, oh, pleasant Vedna, and just really experience whatever, we'll say the ice cream or something, and just pleasant Vedna, really tasting it and enjoying it. If I'm not knowing it and not seeing clearly, if I have projected the pleasantness into the ice cream, it's not in the ice cream. It's just in that moment of contact with the taste sensation. And it changes over time. 
if I continue and I think it's in the thing and I just keep eating the whole thing, get down to the bottom of the tub, it is no longer pleasant. <laughs> it's very unpleasant. And I'm probably a brain freeze. Um, so it's this this is a really important part of meditation is to start to understand how Vedana is working in our systems. Um, and that we'll be saying more about that next week as we go on to what the third aggregate and how these start to play together. Yeah. So tonight, I think I'm just going to keep it to that. Just uh, and we're going to practice with noticing the contact at the different sense doors and seeing uh, neutral. And sometimes when we're new to this, or even even when we're not, it can be hard to notice pleasant or unpleasant Vedana. Sometimes we don't notice it until it's already become clinging or desire we're already like some thought has arisen of okay uh the thought just arose of going to the cottage next week and you know having free time etc <clears throat> so if i didn't notice that it's just pleasant contact with the mind sense door it can easily just weep me away into a little fantasy little let's just trip out for a bit and embellish that thought and have a nice little roll down um pleasant thoughts and <clears throat> likewise if a uh, unpleasant something arises like say <laughs> as often happens here if somebody comes uh, in the driveway or to the door, the dogs are going to go crazy. A bunch of yapping old chihuahuas that can make a lot of noise. And this is highly unpleasant, Vedana. <laughs> and, and in that moment for this being. Um, and if, you know, if I'm not just knowing that is unpleasant, unpleasant, um, it can create spin into huge story. Oh, should I pause the meditation? Will they notice if I get up and go and tell the dogs to be quiet and get them off this, you know, it could just go on and on. And why doesn't so-and-so let them out? It could be, become a huge thing. So when we're practicing, we're going to just, sometimes you might already be caught. You might already notice, oh, we really spun into a story of, Say there's pain and a uh, pain sensation in the body, unpleasant Vedana. It may be after you're already in, like, ah, I really want to move. Should I move? I don't know. I'm on the screen. Should I mute or turn my camera off so they don't, you know, it might, you might get into a lot of story and then notice, hey, wait a minute, back it up. What happened there? Oh, it was unpleasant Vedana. It was contact with that sense door and it became something. So just to name that it might already become a whole becoming before we notice it. Right. So we're going to be, um, I'll be referring to this again the next time we meet and it will start to um, make more sense. Hopefully. Yeah. So tonight, let's, let's drop into a practice now. Okay. So uh, adjusting your posture. Uh, we were talking earlier, uh, depending if you're watching on, on YouTube, you who knows what time of day it is, but for, for um, folks that are here in the Eastern time zone, we're all in slightly different time zones as well, but for several of us, it's evening and it's a sleepy time of, to be practicing meditation. So if there's sleepiness in your system, you could practice standing up 
or just sitting up a little more upright away from the back of your chair. If you're sitting back into a chair, already my shoulders round and my head goes forward and that's really going to drop me into sleepiness. So you might want to put a cushion down behind your hips or sit away from the back of your chair. <clears throat> If there is a lot of um, pain sensation for you, uh, you might like to practice laying down. And if you're doing that, we still are practicing wakefulness, um, awakening to how things are. You could lift up your forearm or lift your, bend your knees so that they'll fall if, if you're falling asleep and kind of uh, give you some energy to begin again. <clears throat> Some folks like to dim their lights in their space or turn away from the computer. Um, so just take some time here to see what your system needs to feel supported in relaxing. Relaxing into wakefulness, uprightness. Once you've found the posture for your practice, check out what position for your eyes is supportive for you. If there's a lot of sleepiness, it might be helpful to practice with eyes slightly open, bringing in some light. If you're easily uh, distracted by sight, it might be helpful to close the eyes. In a few moments, we will practice with each of the sense doors, but for now, just rest your eyes. And we're going to take the first several minutes of the practice here just to land and relax. Connecting with ourselves in the present moment. And feeling the support and the sensations of the ground. Letting awareness settle from the energy and vibrations of the mind activity. And come fully into the body, which of course includes the mind, but just feeling muscles relax, bones heavy, connecting with your support. And I'll be quiet now for a few moments and we'll all continue that together, just arriving and settling. And then we'll begin to bring curiosity and observation and experiencing 
through each of the sense doors, some curiosity with this quality, this experience of Vedana or feeling tone. So without needing to look around the space, moving the eyes and focusing on different things, if you just softly let the eyes float open with a soft peripheral gaze, not and the eyes are even just slightly open. So now the eye sense door is experiencing seeing, which is really just light, shape, shadow. You might have the experience that most of what is in this field of seeing is pretty neutral or not a strong impression. And then see if there's anything in that view that is might have a pleasant quality to it. And the eyes kind of want to move towards that color or that shape or that object. And perhaps there's something in this field of view in this moment that is experienced as slightly or even very unpleasant. So it could be something like seeing a insect walking in your field or too close that you're uncomfortable with. It could be any number of things that can just be known in that bare sense contact as unpleasant. And then when you're ready, you could rest the eyes again. And you might also notice that even with the eyes closed, seeing is happening, that sense door is still active. There's light and shapes and shadows. And um, even when eyes are closed. And sometimes in meditation, some people see colors or they see shapes or lights moving that they experience as pleasant and rather and often rather than just knowing it as pleasant vedana at the eye sense door um, it can easily bring clinging and selfing um, very often like this is something special happening, or this is pretty, I'd like more of it, etc. Okay, and then we'll just relax that eye sense door and let awareness pervade the whole body again, body in whatever posture you're in. Just settle back into the whole body. And a couple more breaths or moments there.
And now we'll open to the ear sense door, the experience of hearing that is happening already in this moment. We'll just turn our attention towards that experience. And even if your space is relatively quiet, there's still the sound of my voice coming through, which may be experienced as unpleasant or pleasant or neutral. And there may be the hum of um, appliances or electronics or air conditioner, whatever, um, and what is the experience of that contact? Pleasant, unpleasant, or neither. This is a very helpful sense store to work with if you're meditating, practicing in a space that often has sounds of others. Some people get very annoyed by that and very distracted from their practice. And it could just be known as unpleasant Vedana at the ear sense door without becoming a story or without becoming a version. Sometimes you might have the opportunity to notice and practice with a, a beautiful sound that suddenly arises. You might hear a bird song or a chime or whatever it is, something that's experienced as pleasant. And you can notice how quickly, just from that bare contact, there's a energetic you sometimes a physical leaning towards it. You want more of that. Or an unpleasant sound of loud neighbors or dogs or whatever. Um, some sudden sound. Uh, and see how quickly the unpleasant becomes aversion. I'll be quiet here for a few more minutes. And then we'll let that attention with hearing, sense door, release and settle awareness, open awareness to the whole body again for a few moments. And then you could choose either the taste or the 
smells and store the mouth or the nose and um, just check that out for a few moments. And then we'll all open again to the whole body to this touch sense door. You can either let the awareness just move around through this bodily experience, perhaps noticing something pleasant, and then something unpleasant, most of it probably neutral, depending on your body and this moment. Or you could just have a sphere of awareness around including the whole body in this moment, in this posture. kind of an open field of awareness. And watch how aware attention is drawn to perhaps an unpleasant Vedna, or maybe an area of strong sensation or pressure. And there may be a quite quickly an inclination to move. See if you could just know it as slightly or strongly unpleasant Vedana. An itch sensation might arise. And very often we don't even know that as a sensation or a Vedana with the sensation. The hand automatically when we're not being mindful, moves to try to release or change that sensation. So check those out. There may also be pleasant Vedana, and sometimes we want that to spread or grow or continue or feel more of that if there's some tingling or flow or a pleasant temperature. Again, I'll be quiet here for a few minutes as we practice with this sense door and its vedanas. And the last sense door will bring curiosity to is the mind. 
thought might arise spontaneously or conditioned. And when it's a pleasant thought, we may easily float into daydream or desire. When it's unpleasant, we might, that might flow and perpetuate into version. We might also have the experience of just a neutral mind vedna if the mind is just resting with an object and there isn't a lot of other contact arising. In a moment, I'll ring the bowl three times and see if you can just stay with the practice and notice what that hearing sense door Vedana is and also the mind sense door as it comes into play. After the end of the third sound, you can transition from your practice. Thank you for your practice. I meant to mention in the notes um, before the practice, the simile. So the teachings are often supported by beautiful imagery and uh, stories uh, that the Buddha shared. And so the simile for this Vedna in the five aggregates is of um, a water bubble. So uh, like last week when we were talking about form, it was like um, a glob of foam on the river. Um, you know, sometimes it depends on seasons and whatever, but like if you think of a, a here it, there's a, um, a dam with a waterfall. And so we often get these globs of foam kind of floating down the river, like a collection of bubbles. And um, the simile for, for this one tonight is a single water bubble. 
the, the, the description is of a, a, a um, rain, fat, heavy drops of rain, um, and a water bubble appears and disappears on the water just um, quite quickly. And so it's not like a whole glob of them floating along. And um, so when we, when we, if we were to see heavy rain dropping and creating a bubble that arises and passes very quickly, if we're observing it and seeing that clearly, we would see it as it is ephemeral, very um, weak, um, momentary, momentary. And so that is a helpful image for some of us when we're practicing in this way with Vedna to see like these contacts are just like that, pop, 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 little rain bubbles, very momentary, coming and going. Even a sound here, like a that there's a hum from the computer. I'm on a desktop. It's, makes a humming sound so even a sound that seems constant like it's not doesn't seem momentary there's like this constant hum but when you really pay attention it has waves in it it's like it it's a waving sound it's not a constant it's um it it it's of the nature of change very um insubstantial um, and this can help us like, so these things, when they're not seen clearly can lead to a creation of a self, but uh, to a lot of suffering, a lot of clinging and, um, avoid an aversion and delusion, not seen clearly. And when it's seen clearly, just known as a a bubble popping is just a contact with the sense door. It's just unpleasant, Vedana, or it's just pleasant or neutral. When it's known that way, it's liberating, it's freeing. Clinging and aversion and delusion have the possibility of not arising. <laughs> That's pretty big. <laughs> Very wonderful. And even when they have arisen, and we notice we're caught, we can sometimes, with training, with practice, get used to kind of pretty quickly tracing it back to go, hmm, you just didn't like it, sweetie. It's okay. You just didn't like it. Or, oh, that was pleasant. Now you want the whole thing? You know, I, yeah, yeah. I could go on, but I will not. So um, in the Zoom room, I won't be here next week, but we will then continue um, with part three of, um, of this exploration in two weeks time. And uh, thank you for joining us on YouTube. Uh, I'll put the links down below to the first recording if you missed the first one. Thanks. <laughs>